Hare Krishna. Once again, welcome to my channel, Purposeful Prosperity. We are continuing our wisdom series from the Little Book of Common Sense Investing, and today we are going through the chapter number ten, selecting the long-term winners. And the warning being given is that don't look for the needle by the haystack. So Bogle is beginning this chapter with a very good quotation, saying that don't look for the needle in the haystack, just by the haystack. Let's just understand what he is trying to explain to us. So Bogle is saying that the fund investors are confident that they can easily select superior fund managers, but they are wrong. It's unfortunate, but we are wrong. So this sounds easy that selecting the winning funds in advance is, but it is more difficult than it looks. Yes, there are always some winners, but those winners which are going to survive for some 25 30 years they are going to be very rare it is being said that it's easy to identify the past winners uh, from uh, and but there is little evidence that such performance persists in the future so i think by default all tilful retail investors are selecting the fund based on the past performance you are selecting based on the short term performance some are selecting based on the long term performance but clearly there is no evidence or very little evidence that such performance persists in the future so here bogle is trying to give us the data of some call close to 45 years and he is saying that the odds against success are really terrible and if you look at this data the total number of funds were close to 355 and out of this 355 only two funds delivered the superior return the first and most obvious surprises awaits you is that there were non survivors which are 281 close to 80% of mutual funds are shut down or gone out of business in a time frame of 45 years so by default all retail investors want to invest for a long term i think as soon as somebody comes into a market he always thinks that i am going to be a long term investor like warren buffett but do you really query that are your going are your funds going to remain for that long or not so if your funds doesn't endeavor for the long term how can you invest for the long term that's not possible and then the last point with bogle is saying that even of this 355 funds two funds were superior but then to know whether those two funds were superior because of their skill or it just a matter of luck so between two things it will be really hard to differentiate and if you think that this uh, top two funds out of 355 funds you would have selected for yourself i think that will be a terrible illusion and we should not fall for such illusions then bogles further talks about the disappearance the funds disappearance and there can be multiple reasons and i think one of the most prominent reason that we are aware of is that performance laggards normally disappears but here bogle is trying to add couple more points which we retail investors should be aware of uh, and the first one is talking about that the fund managers moves because in general a fund manager uh, tenure will be close to 9 to 10 years for a equity mutual fund and after that it he moves on or there will be a change in the fund manager second thing is that uh, different financial common collaborates acquired the fund management companies and that new sometimes a new manager decided to clean up the product lines that can also cause your funds to disappear then we have all often investors fleet funds with lagging performance and the fund assets ranks <coughs> and then they become a drag on their manager's profit so as soon as the investor sees that the performance is lagging they remove their funds from that fund and then the aum further sinks and that forces the aum or the mutual fund companies to close down those funds we also see that if some funds are just performing uh, flattered even there is no degradation but they are not performing good compared to their corresponding peers then that also causes people to uh, run away their money from those funds and that also causes funds to disappear and also even if your funds are performing good but if they are not able to withdraw a large sum of amount or capital from the new investor then definitely aum companies are not getting what they want 
they want the large capital to flow in their AUMs or in their companies. But if that is not happening from a fund which is performing good, then they can even close down the good fund also. So we can see that the, if a fund has simply outlived their usefulness, then that can be a reason the fund should disappear. And Boggle is trying to give, uh, makes that disappear on this fund as a death in a family. And he gives an example of State Street Investment Trust, which was there for close to 80 years, but now is no longer there. So a good performing fund who was there for such a long duration, if that can also disappear. So what about those funds who are performance laggards? And we have seen from the data that 80% of funds disappear in just 45 years. So we really need to think and take this into consideration while selecting our active funds. Pogol is further trying to add that if you are very talented and keep winning, you will do just fine. But the talent is hard to identify and talent is hard to tell from luck. See, we are looking for a short term performance of two year, three year, five year or at a max 10 year. And based on that performance, we are trying to think that a particular fund manager is talented. But Boggle is saying that it's hard to identify whether it's a talent or it's a luck. And if you are wrong that you have selected a lucky person and if it, his luck is not in favor of him, then you are on a wrong boat and you are making an incorrect decision in your investment journey. So Boggle is trying to advise, don't make that mistake. Now Boggle is further trying to deep dive into two of the top performing funds out of the 45, uh, and both the funds were from Fidelity, and the top one is that Megalum fund. So let's just deep dive what that fund is about. So everybody knows that this fund at some point of time was taken care of, by the star investor, Mr. Peter Lynch. And I think everybody knows he has, he has a very good uh, investor. Uh, so from this, if you look at the graph on the right hand side, you can see that in the beginning, the fund AUM was really less. And I think it was around 1990, that was when the Peter Lynch has took over this fund and fund started performing really good. I think it was close to 23 or 25% uh, uh, annually return there. And that time you can see that the how fund AUM is continuously increasing. And this fund behavior will peak out in 1999 where it reaches a high of 106 billion. And that's the time it, it outperformance failed to persist. So we can really see that the with money pouring into Magnum fund when it was hot and money pouring out when it turns cold, cold. So this may be a classic case of counterproductive investor behavior. So that's a common investor behavior and it's really a counterproductive in our investment journey. So we can see that from even a top performing fund cannot perform good if the AUM increases after a certain limit. And this counter on top of this, the counterproductive investor behavior combine both this AUM and the counterproductive behavior that can really make our investment journey up. It can really put some big roadblocks in our investment journey. And we should really try to avoid that. So you can see that even after selecting the best funds, there is no guarantee that you can derive the same sort of returns which those funds have generated. Peter Lynch uh, later in one of his interviews says that most investors would be better off in an index fund. And you know, I have seen the real investor nowadays reading books by Peter Lynch saying that one up on the Wall Street, and they really think that they can become a great investor and by uh, reading the Peter Lynch books and they can themselves replicate what Peter Lynch did. But do you think if that would have been a case, why Peter Lynch would have said that most investors would be better off in index fund? Because he really understand the retail investors behavior and the market psychologies. The counterproductive behavior he really have seen from a long duration, so he really understand that a retail investor cannot do those kind of a things. So it's better to be with an index fund. That's an advice from an active fund manager, Peter Lynch, 
he is really honored among the investor communities so we should take his words very seriously second fund which really had performed it was the fidelity counter fund and if you look at the long term record of this fund then during its first 30 year it was great success and followed by a reversion to mean principle so once again here also you see that the once the fund asset reaches a limit of 103 billion the fund performance to degrade started degrading compared to an s&p 500 so here we really understand that when the reported investment returns generated by the magellan and the contra fund were noticed by the investor they really poured all their money and once they really become giant in the set total that's where when they started lagging and then people all these real investor who poured the money in them they started taking those money out and that further caused their performance degradation so in the so once they reach and they really become giants and grows then their performance become lackluster now the question is why and warren buffett clearly summarizes this thing into a one simple line where he says that a fat wallet is the enemy of superior return so a big aum for a mutual fund is just like a fat wallet so it cannot generate now a superior return it is not possible so we should try to avoid those mistakes so we can see that even though you have this 1% chance of selecting the best mutual fund but then your counterproductive behavior of the investor and the psychology and the behavior of investors it because of which you will not be able to do this for a lifetime a reversion to mean principle is going to come even in those top performing funds so bogle further says about a very good quote where he says that uh, live by the sword die by the sword the bogle is say that the fund managers will face inflows when times are good and outflows when times are bad so of uh, this is a fundamental challenge to the industry sensitivity to fluctuating fund returns so if you really want to understand his quote so when he says that the live by the sword it means that you are trying to select an actual mutual fund which is performing good compared to a index fund and then he says that the the same mutual fund once it reaches a, a high aum and the counterproductive behavior of investor combined together the performance is going to degrade and then you are going to die in your investment journey because of the same active mutual fund so why to make this mistake now bogal is further trying to say what are the points that we should be thinking if we are still not convinced about the index fund and want to go for the active fund then what are the things that we should be thinking of before taking a leap first thing he say that think about the next 10 year or even a longer duration second thing he say that think about the odds that a winning fund will continue to outperform think about the fund present size its current aum think about the reality that over the next 25 years the fund managers are going to replace two to three times think about the likelihood that even a single investor had actually held share of the fund throughout its life journey so let's say if the fund is there for 20 years do you think that the investor who really invested in the very beginning is he still going to hold that for next 20 years and at the last he is saying that think to about the odds that of given fund even exist after 25 years these are all the points we should be thinking when selecting an active mutual fund but instead of thinking about all these six point what we are thinking we are thinking about the past performance and based on that we are making our selections and create our financial plan these financial pl- plans are going to fail drastically and we will be playing a losers game if we are not thinking about all these important points which bogal is advising us and saying that look before you leap bogal is further advising that it is challenging and competitive world 
out of these mutual fund lands and no one knows where the future hold nowadays we have seen that many algorithm is based mutual fund has come some are saying momentum value growth now we see that the big big financial institutions like we have bajaj finance entering into the mutual fund industry zerodha grow lens geo all of them are planning to enter into this aum industry because they know that this is going to grow and since they are charging based on their aum they are the one who are always playing a winners game they are the one who are always going to get the money and there will be more and more options to the mutual fund uh, options you are going to get for real investor and for them and when all of them are going to compete do you think that you are going to find a true winner i would guess it's almost impossible at the end bogle is saying that whatever you decide please don't ignore one of the latest least understood factor that shapes mutual fund performance and that's reversion to mean we have to think these performance are like pendulums sometimes they are performing extremely good and sometimes they are performing extremely bad and other times they are just about average so this pendulum is going to swing in any direction that a retail investor will not be able to decide so if you are making a selection based on the past returns then we are simply killing our investment journey and we should not make that mistake bogle is further continuing saying that that don't look for the needle in the haystack just by the haystack why is that so he is saying that the the odds in favor of owning one of the two mutual funds out of this 355 is which are providing the superior long term records was just 1/2 to 1%. So your chances of selecting a winner fund is just 0.5 to 1%. So do you really want to take those chances or do you really want to be selecting a low cost index fund which really uh, exceed the returns of the 345 out of 355 funds? which begins 46 years competition so that means you have 97% of chances of winning if you select a low cost index fund which is just like a haystack so haystack is the entire stock market portfolio readily available through index fund so do do you really think that it is really wise to select that best performing fund where the probability is just 0.5 to 1% or should you go for a low cost index one where you have 97% winning chance so on one side you have a winners game other is a losers game and it is the a wise investor is the one who is going to make a decision and he should make the right decision if he is really sticking with the bockel's advice then he is having 97% winning chances bockel talks about investing for lifetime he never talks about 10 year 20 year 30 year he talks about a lifetime investing and for this he says that there are always going to be two options the option vision is indexing in a 30 to 40 active funds or active fund managers or second option is that you invest in one index fund with one non manager because index fund doesn't require any managers so out of these two funds which one you will be selecting now you may be thinking that for option 1 why we have selected 30 to 40 funds i would have selected only the top 2 3 funds and that would perform better than the index fund but if you look at the retail investor behavior over a long duration you can see that in the in the big beginning years you will select couple of funds they will perform good for 2 3 years then their performance will degrade then you see a new set of 3 or 4 funds performing good then you add those funds into your portfolio so every 3 year 3 to 4 funds are getting added so over a 10 years you will see that your portfolio consisting of some 30 to 40 funds which are really charging high cost they are having their complex selection algorithms do you really think that this option is going to win compared to the option 2 unfortunately it's not because as per bogle simplicity 
cost efficiency and staying the course will win the race and that will so if you really want to win the race of investing that is only possible if you are opting for option 2 which is investing in one index fund with no manager at all even after all this understanding some people will still think that they can still find that needle to those people bogle is advising that there is simply no systematic way to assure success by picking the fund that will beat the market even by looking at their past performance and that too over the long term so he is saying that it's like it's like looking for a needle in a haystack with no better odds of finding one so even if you are looking a very long term performance then also there is no systematic way to guarantee that the same performance is going to repeat in the future so why are we going to make that mistake let's not try to find that needle in the haystack in fact buy that full haystack using a low cost index fund then bogle bogle is further giving a reference to the warren buffett 2013 letter to shareholder where bogle Uh, where the Warren Buffett says that my advice to the trustee could be could not be more simple, where it says that put 10% of cash in short-term government bond and 90% in a low-cost S&P 500 index bond. I believe the trust long-term results from this policy would be superior those attained by most investors, whether pension funds, institutions, individuals who employ high fees managers. so warren buffett who himself is an active investor he is very confident that this strategy with this strategy you can beat most of the investors now you guys might be thinking that maybe in a emotion warren buffett might have said that statement but maybe in a next 10 year or 5 year he would might have changed his his stance on that let's just see what he is saying in 2020 profit for the saying that i can tell you i haven't changed my will and it directs that my widow would have 90% of the funds in index fund i think it's better advice than people are generally getting from people who are paid a lot to give advice so all the mutual fund advisors personal financiers influencers we are paying some fees to them for selecting the best stocks or the best mutual funds and pogal is saying that these index fund strategy is going to do better than all of them then why to make that mistake so that means we are taking advice from people who are getting paid for giving that advices and we are not taking advice from an investment guru like warren buffett is it really wise to make this kind of a mistake it doesn't suit a a good retail investor to make this kind of a mistake take the wisdom from warren buffett and stop the noises from all those who are giving advices even after we paying money to them then bogle is giving reference to mr paul samson he where the pers- uh, mr paul says that the perhaps there really are managers who can outperform the market consistently logic would suggest that they exist but they are remarkably well hidden so paul is agreeing yes there is possibility that you can have some good fund managers which can outperform the market we he we are never saying it's not possible but they are remarkably hidden so uh, do you think that a common tail investor who is doing a sip on monthly basis do you think that he can find those hidden things he will never be able to find them it you have more chances of failing compared to your chances of winning so why to play a loser's game so select an index fund and avoid that mistake and mr paul further says that for sex search of needles that are very small in haystack that are so very large so our haystacks are the different mutual fund options which are right now provided to retail investors and you can see from the past data that how these funds are increasing 
their categories are are invest are increasing we have uh, these theme based investments are coming into the picture there are many funds of funds coming there are different companies which are starting their these aum industries so the hey stack is becoming very 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 large and more it's becoming large there will be very less chances of you finding that needle so let's not make the mistake of selecting that needle from that very large haystack that's the advice mr paul is trying to give us mr paul further give a very nice analogy to understand this even more clear where he says that suppose this was demonstrated that one out of 20 alcoholic could learn to become a moderate social drinker the experienced clinician would answer even if it's true active at it was false for you will never identify that one in 20 and the attempt and in the attempt 5 in 20 will be ruined the investor should forsake the search for such tiny needles in the huge haystacks so look at the beauty how he has put this crisp knowledge in this one very simple quote so let's break this into three parts the so first part says that one out of 20 alcoholic could learn to become a moderate social drinker and if you look at these investor advisors or your influencers even the sometimes the cb registered advisors also what they are saying that this fund can perform better compared to these 20 or 100 mutual funds don't you think the statement is quite similar to saying that one out of 20 alcoholic would learn to become a moderate social drinker it's exactly the same but an experienced clinician so the so one who is really your well-wisher advisor a real well-wisher advisor is what is going to advise he is going to advise that even if that fund is performing too good don't go for it go for an index fund your majority of your portfolio he will advise to be with the index fund and for your satellite portfolio he can ask that okay maybe you can play around with this fund or that fund or another fund but for your portfolio portfolio a true advisor is always going to advise you to go for an index fund only and if you don't do that mistake if you don't follow the such advisor and you if you go for any random advisor whom you are paying some high fees then 5 in 20 will be ruined so 20 to 30 percent investor will be simply ruin their investment journey if they are listened to those influencers or your non well-wisher advisors who are not advising you to go for index funds so don't make the mistake take the wisdom from mr paul i think all his quotes clearly saying us what we need to do Mr. Paul, not just stopping at this point, he is further advising that even fans of actively managed funds often uh, concrete that most often other investors would be better off in index fund. But by abundant self-confident, these folks aren't about to give up on actively managed fund themselves. Very important thing. So actively managed mutual funds also so the fans who are the fans of active manage active mutual funds management they also know that over a long term index fund is going to perform better but then also they will not be able to advise why because of this false self confidence they still feel that they can find those winners they are not ready to give up on this thing and because of that they are they themselves are making the mistake they are making their followers also make the same mistake of looking for this needle in the haystack and as per mr paul this is a tad delusion so picking the best performing fund is like trying to predict the dice before you roll them down the crepe table so do you want your investment thing to become like this i think this is completely a gambling so think about it are you an investor or are you a gambler are you come here in the market for investing or have you come for the gambling because picking up a best performing 
mutual fund is like trying to predict the dice so we can say it's it's selecting the best fund is like gambling why you want to gamble so one of the investment advisor in uh, uh, baka return clearly says that i cannot do it or the public cannot do it they are clearly saying that you cannot find the best mutual fund so such a intelligent people with so much of knowledge and data available if they are saying that they cannot do it why retail investor like us we are thinking that we can do this or we are taking some advices by paying some fees to different people who just started their investment journey or having their investment advisory firm for open for some just 10 15 years do you think that they can do it sorry guys they also cannot do it so bogle is clearly giving us a very strong warning that buying fund based purely on their past performance is one of the stupidest thing a investor can do so don't become a stupid in our investment journey take the wisdom from mr bogle and avoid those stupidest things bogle is further saying that if these comments from great money managers brilliant academics and the straight thinking journalist does not persuade you about the hazard of focusing on past return of mutual fund just believe what the fund organization tells you look at this so many data points he is giving so every single firm in the fund industry acknowledge bogle's conclusion that the past fund performance is no help in projecting the future return of mutual fund this statement you would have heard with every single advertisement of mutual fund every mutual fund prospectus come with this kind of a statement but we never listen to them we are simply doing just the opposite of that mr paul is saying that believe it in every mutual fund prospects in every sales promotional folder in every mutual fund advertisement although they print in a very small fonts the following warning appears past performance is no guarantee of future results dear friends please repeat the statement past performance is no guarantee of future returns but all real investors are doing the same mistake they are looking at the past performance only and based on that they are making their financial plan and that's one of the biggest blunder and the stupidest thing i would compare this kind of an action with the action people are doing a chain smoker is doing a chain smoker when he is uh, burning the cigarette from the packet he can read that smoking kills but then also he is continuously doing that smoking similarly all these mutual funds prospect are clearly saying that past performance is no guarantee of future results but then also we keep on betting that no no i will get my future return similar to my past return don't you think we are also acting like a chain smoker so are we really an investor a gambler or a chain smoker think about it yourself guys and make a better decision for yourself so thank you once again for staying with me for such a long time i hope you guys make something good out of this thing if you really think that this kind of a things are really making some value to you then feel free to like share and subscribe to my channel purposeful prosperity feel free to share this with as many people as possible so that we can make the retail investor avoid making those stupid mistake we can now make sure that they stop searching for those small needles in a huge large haystack so thank you once again hare krishna